Welcome to Deeper Than a Cut. This is something very new we are doing on Fox2Detroit.com, Fox Local. It's a new platform. And we are at Executive Cuts and More here in Detroit, right outside of downtown Detroit. And in many communities, the barbershop is a sanctuary, if you will. It's a place where you can have candid dialogue. And so these are some of the gentlemen you're going to be seeing on many of these segments. Mo, right above me. D'Angelo standing up, and then T right here. Right here. Gentlemen, this is something we have been talking about for quite some time. I come here weekly to get a haircut, but again, the name of the segment is Deeper Than a Cut. Elaborate on what that means. Well, it has so many meanings to it. When you think about um, haircuts, you know, a barbershop, you think about haircuts. You mm -hmm. know, you come in, you go in one way and leave out another way, feeling a certain kind of way. But um, over time, um, as we think about the profession of barbering is not just about a haircut. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't come to a barbershop just to get a haircut. You come in, you know, just to have some nice laid back talk, you know, reminisce, talk about sports. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you come in here lying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, trying to act like something is not. But, you know, it's a fun, open place for men as well as women to come in and just feel comfortable being themselves. Mm -hmm. you, know, um, you know, at work you have roles that you have to play, things that you have to do in ministry or whatever aspect of life that you're in. But in a barbershop, you just come in and just be who you are yeah. and just relax, enjoy yourself, uh, enjoy the conversations. But on top of that, you leave out looking good and feeling good. Yeah. And if you're feeling good, you can go out there and do good. <laughs> Absolutely. Amen to that, brother. Amen. Right. With, with, my, with my feeling with Deeper Than The Cut, it's like I, when I first got with these guys, mm -hmm. it, it's deeper than the cut with, mm -hmm. with us because we, we ain't just partners, barbers. We brothers. We, you know, we This is what we do. We, we uplift each other. Absolutely. So to me, that's deeper than the cut. Yeah. You know, the way we run our shop, you know, and everything, the, the people that we bring in, you know how you know we 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 don't raise kids from from, from babies <laughs> yes. to grown ups. You mm -hmm. know, yeah, so it's absolutely. deeper than the cut. You know, so absolutely. Just like the relationship we done built with you since you've been here, it's just like hey, it's a beautiful thing to me. So that is just it's it's deeper than the cut all the time. <laughs> My friend over here, we build a good relationship. It just it's a beautiful thing to me. Beautiful, absolutely. Yeah. Barbershop man, the barbershop has been a staple in the community of our culture for over hundreds and thousands of years, man. Yes. And, and I'm telling you, I've watched, been in this business for so long as I have, I've watched so many lives come up. Men's yeah. lives yeah. have yeah. come up from being in the barbershop. Yep. It's deeper than a cut. So when you look at the community, you have to involve a barbershop. Yeah. When, you, when you have a barbershop where you can come to and, and not just come for a cut, and, and you watch people, their, their spirits down when they come in. You watch their life. They come in, have pressure of life on them. And they can finally find a place where they can come and get that conversation. They may unlock a lot of peace they need. Mm -hmm. And they're like, that's what Deeper Than The Cut is all about. Absolutely. It's bigger than an actual cut. The cut is just a tool to get you in the chair. But the weapon is the conversation. Yeah. And yeah. so when, you, when you're able to talk somebody through problems and make them look good, mm -hmm. they sit around. They come, they, they come back without needing a cut. Right. You know, or they'll they'll stick around for hours without even without even going coming in, leaving or coming out, go, coming back in. They'll say, you know what? I'm just gonna come up here just to see my guys. I just stop by, bring us some drinks, bring us some food. <laughs> just stop by because they they feel like this is the place where they can be themselves and get rid of all of the pressure from maybe relationships, marriage, children, jobs, whatever. They release everything right here in the barbershop. Absolutely. So it's deeper than the cut. Always yeah. deeper. T, I remember uh, when you used to cut my hair back when I went to Denby High School, and now yeah. your wife, she we went to Denby back. High School as well. Yeah. Denby, hey, you, hey, all good. You went to you went to Kettering, but your wife went to Denby. She did. Yeah. She did. I got no. Denby, Denby, you went to Denby as well. Oh, yeah, I'm 50 Persian. 50. Persian. Persian. Yeah. Hey, all good. All Detroit. Yeah. And gentlemen, I, I bring up that memory because when I went to your old barber shop on Kelly and Meringue when oh, I was 15, man. 16 yeah, years James. old, yeah. I remember how I used to stay open until midnight at yeah. times. We'd be up in there playing Madden when Michael was Vick different. was the fastest player on the game. Yeah. It was different. And yeah. just had all sorts of conversations yes, just going yes. there. Yeah. Man, that was crazy, man. We, we literally, we literally didn't, at that moment, I'll be honest, I didn't understand what barbershop mm. meant to the community. 
I was younger. I had a lot to learn. Yes. In that time, and I've learned a lot from, from that time. Amen. And I, we can say that for later, but <laughs> I've learned a lot. I understand now what, what it takes to really, to really become a true professional and really understand my purpose and how to help uh, different men mm -hmm. and work with brothers and, and not let what I my lifestyle follow me to work and all that kind of stuff. The barbershop has been a staple, and in my upbringing. I just had to learn how to function. I had to learn as a young business entrepreneur. Entrepreneur at 22 years old, I was owning my own barbershop. You know, and, and the, the fame, the fortune, the popularity, and who you meant to people, I didn't understand how powerful that was. But I understand now. And so now, this is what we do. We give back and we help so many lives. We mm -hmm. help so many different people from that aspect. But in that time, man, that's... I think you unlock something. That's, <laughs> and that's what makes it so important, really and truly, because something. as the barbering profession, sometimes we miss really what you mean to yeah, the community. That's and, and that's why we do stuff like this and, and this type of platform, because the reality of it is, is once you learn better, it's your responsibility to go back and teach somebody else mm, yeah. to do better, because if yeah. you're not careful, you will lead a barbering profession in a hustle. For sure. And it's really a profession. It's a professional setting that you have. And once you learn that, you start learning who you are. Yeah. You might start off saying, I just want to make some money like I did. Yep. But it came to a point where I said, you know what? It's more than money to this. It's about being able to understand your importance, your purpose. And then once you find that out, walk in it. And then you're responsible for teaching others. So that's why that's right. you go back to Michigan Barber School to teach because yeah. you want to make sure that you teach the profession and not just the hustle of it. Although there is a hustling that's aspect true. to it. The, the root and ground place of it is a profession. Yeah, and yeah. once you learn the profession of it, you run your business as a professional barbershop and people will come in. You, you'll be surprised who you'll attract. You'll right. attract professionals, yeah. <laughs> people that want to come in that kind of setting. Right. Right. And when you get those kind of people, your business begins to run on its own because professionals tell other professionals. That's it. And people who want to become professionals come in and learn how to be a professional. And so there's so many aspects to it. You learn that you become, you know, mentors, you become pastors, you become therapists. Mm -hmm. There's so many things to being a barber. But once you find your purpose, you got to make sure you walk in it. That's it. But once you walk in it, don't just be selfish and keep all that information and all that money mm -hmm. and all that knowledge and resources to yourself you're then responsible to go and teach the next generation. That's and that's why me and Hobson is over at Michigan Barber School now to teach the next generation of barbers so that we can keep the professionalism in it and just not just the hustle. That's good. Amen, amen. Good. Mo, what made you become a barber? Sure, I didn't want to work at the plant no more. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a candy oh, yeah. segment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, we're being honest, right? Uh, we're being honest. No, the reason I became a barber because I, I, used, to, I used to always cut my friends in the neighborhood yeah. and stuff, right? So one time I was I was I was at the plant mm -hmm. and my friend I was like man I'm sick of this plant stuff so he like man go to school for barbering you you can cut he said I said you know what I'm gonna do that so this guy named Debo he gave me the opportunity to work in Debo <laughs> yeah. yeah. he gave me the opportunity to work in his shop while I go to school yeah so there it is you know but now like since I've been I've been doing it for so long. Probably almost twenty years I've been cutting, so now it's more. It's it's not just for a job, you know, because I don't I don't put people in my chair to that they never even talked. Mm -hmm. Now they I can't get them to stop talking. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? The right. brought things, you yes. know, change they, you know, their mentality because that's that's what we're here to do. We're here to to, to uplift and and, and 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 make people feel safe. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's what that's what deeper than the cut is all about. Is 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 put is laying the blueprint. Yeah. And, and because a lot of people you come in the shop, they ain't safe. They they don't know if, they, if somebody gonna do a drive by. Mm, you know, yeah. you come here, you can fall asleep and wake back up, and you good. You see? Absolutely. You know. We, we, T, I I have fallen asleep in your <laughs> chair many times. <laughs> getting a haircut. Right. right. <laughs> when well, you wake up at one thirty, right. two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Oh, hey, right. yeah. Right. Right. It's past Thursday. Right. Right. You're a professional though. Yeah. 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 Somebody just a hustle. No. Hey, with that being said, Mo, you make an excellent point. Okay. D'Angelo, when you walk into Executive Cuts and More here, there are standards. Eight, standards. Yeah. Eight rules. Standards. Yeah. Right. And 
the number one, <laughs> which is one many of us break from time to time. <laughs> Absolutely no profanity. Absolutely no profanity uh, is you. important because, I mean, we have to make sure, as I said from the beginning, it's a professional atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Some people will say, well, you know, certain other at <laughs> atmospheres of professionals are different than, you know, they use profanity. Well, the reality of it is, is when you have a community based place where people come, mm -hmm. you have kids, you have elders, we have pastors, mm -hmm. we have, you know, senators, we have all different walks of life, yeah. judges, Pist news I've seen anchors, it with my own two pistons, eyes. and so you have all these people come Big in, and the one thing, <laughs> and, the one th <laughs> and the one thing that you want to make sure is that people feel comfortable, mm -hmm. yeah. um, because they're bringing you their hard-earned yeah. money. Yeah. You know, they go to work and make yeah. this money, and I don't want them to feel like they owe it to me because... Yeah. They just, oh, I got to come here. No, I want yeah. you to feel comfortable while you're here because if you feel comfortable, Absolutely. the place you feel the most comfortable is the place you visit the most often. Yeah. And so if you're comfortable in the barbershop, you're going to keep bringing me my, my money so that I can go home and take care of my family. Again. <laughs> and that's just not for me, but for the barbers that uh, Executive Cuts and More is responsible for. Okay. Yeah, man. That's, that's, that go back to that first question you asked me about 20 years ago. Yes. I haven't always been, I haven't always talked this way. I haven't always lived this way. So I didn't have a day. I didn't run a dangerous barbershop, but there was some times the level, the music, the genre ah. <laughs> was, wasn't the best. You know, I remember, I remember a lady. She had her, her young son to come in, and, and won't say the, the song, but the song, the music that was playing at that time. She asked me, she was like, "Can you please turn that up?" It was like, was like, "What's wrong with it? I'm twenty? I'm twenty? I'm like this. This is a jam that just came out." <laughs> But business, the business side and the safety that she was looking for her son, right? The example that she was looking of, of a barbershop for her son that was five years old, that was an ideal for her. And, and I still, at that time, at that time, I didn't understand until after the fact she talked to me. She was like, that's the wrong music to play. I don't want my son listening mm. to that type of music. And, and so when you, when you start to understand the atmosphere is everything, then you'll do different to make sure that it's conducive for everybody, no matter if they're one years old or they're 89. Mm -hmm. And so the shop that we have now, your 89-year-old grandmother or grandfather can come. You can leave and come back and pick them up and not have to worry about the safety, not have to worry about the security. There's there's no hanky-panky going on here. There's no shooting dice. Mm -hmm. There's no different illegal transactions going on beneath the surface. It's deeper than the cut, and we, we operate and we function as professionals here. Lead by example. Lead, Lead by, by example. example. Period. If you're going to teach it, you got to do it. You got to do it. Right. Period. You're responsible. That's yeah. good. So, accountability. <laughs> that's the biggest piece. Whenever mm -hmm. you're leading, if you hold people accountable, but most importantly, hold yourself accountable, yeah. everybody is responsible for the same level of standards. Yeah. And the standards are, are printed clear and the vision is clear. And if you make it plain, the people that read are run by it. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's good. Uh, give me a little bit of history. Just like how far back can you think about the barbershop scene and just how influential it's been? <sighs> Decades, hundreds of years. I, I mean, me. this is <laughs> not. You, you gentlemen alluded to it at the beginning of this segment. It's part of the culture. For sure. Absolutely. Definitely. It's, 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 it's so far back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even if you talk about the history of it, I. I and you can dabble from history to last week to yeah. the future <laughs> because yeah. barbering goes so far. Yeah. But it was been a part of the community since from the beginning because yeah. we were called barber surgeons from mm. the get go. When it first started, we were yeah. extracting teeth, we were um, drawing blood, we were getting infections out of the body. So we yeah. were doctors as well as barbers. Right. We would clean shave the body. I mean, and then, we're talking about early 1900s, late 1800s. Yeah, yeah. 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 the glacier age, yeah. right? Right. Mm. We're talking about mm. years ancient and history, thousands of years ago, right? And so, with that, it does not change the fact that we were community based. Then people came there for dentistry work, yeah, for bloodletting work, yes. for blood work, yeah, and for haircuts, yes, beard work trim. And to this day, you're still in the community. You're yes. just that as, as that important because people want to go to their various jobs or go to their, you know, significant other. They want to look good. Mm -hmm. And so to look good, you got to pass by this barbershop right. to get to what you're trying to get to. And our goal is to not just make you look good, but make you feel good That's from it. the soul, mind, body and spirit. That's okay. It. Of course, you guys can do any kind of cut, but I, I want to get a sense of what's your favorite kind of style to cut. <sighs> 
Are we talking a fade? Are we talking a taper? Uh, uh, g- give uh, me a little, a little taking, insight on. I'm what, taking what? the ball fade all day. <laughs> ball. I learned how to, back. See, we history. Uh-huh. We wasn't wearing tapers and all this stuff. Yeah. These Afro yeah. curly cuts. This light. My mother would have sent me back to the barbershop and said, "I gave you ten dollars for a cut. <laughs> <laughs> cut it all so off. Not a trim. I was. I would learn how to cut off ball fade. It was ball fades for many years of my my first years of. Of, of working mm-hmm. in a barbershop and just cutting out the basement at the high school, it was ball phase. Uh-huh. And that's even today, that's my standard which I teach off of. I tell the students right now, if you master, you learn how to do a ball fade, every other cut becomes easy You're because right. there's so much experience within a ball fade mm-hmm. that it equates to like five different tapers. It's the same cut. I mean, it's the same thing. If you follow that platform, that's it. With the ball fade, you just in a different, a smaller area. Excellent. But here, you that's just it. fade the same way. It's, it's that's no it. changing. See, and that's right. what a lot of people. When you get to a taper, you want to change how you do a ball fade, but it's all the same steps. You yeah. Know, so it's just a smaller platform. Mm-hmm. That ball fade a bad boy. That's a bad boy. That's really? a bad boy. I, I, I when you see, because <sighs> now everybody wears tapers. <laughs> yeah. Everybody, well, not everybody. A lot of people wear tapers. Ball fade is, has kind of phased out, mm-hmm. you know. But Man. like you said, growing up, you were doing ball fades, and they weren't always blended. So they you had to up. learn, you had to perfect that yes. blend on a ball fade. And yes. once you perfect that blend on the ball fade, there's right. not a cut that you can't do. What? Because uh, a mohawk encompasses a ball fade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A taper right. throw. Yeah. A shadow fade. A ball, a ball taper. A high taper. It's a mid same. taper. A drop fade. All of it is encompassed within that ball fade. You're going to have to use those steps somewhere within those cuts. So if you learn the ball fade, you literally learn how to cut every haircut. Right. And it becomes a lot more easier. But my favorite one to cut is them, the, with the fro on too. the top. Uh-huh. And yeah, that, that pop that tape on the side. Easy. That's Look. easy money. Easy okay. money. Hey. <laughs> we don't say no easy to money. money. I was going to say that first. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Yeah, that was, you asked so me first what my favorite cut well, was. Well, you get to say it now. Okay. My okay. favorite cut was before he said it. Okay. The one on the side, uh-huh. taper, swirl it up real fast. I'm going to be probably two of them in 30 minutes. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Nah, hey, and nah. I love these kids now. But, but that changes. So, like, right. I'm saying my favorite cut was the ball fade, but definitely I'm going with y'all. The easy money. I'm, I'm doing, I can do five of them in an hour. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And the price don't change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, All I mean, the same. but yeah, ball fade, right. though, for real. Ball, ball fade. If, right, if we have a motto, my son Smith and, and Mo, we, we always say, if you put a line in somebody head, you got to get it out. Mm-hmm. And a lot of barbers say, oh, I, my ball fade, I got the best ball fade. But if I see a line, it's an incomplete haircut. You should never see the steps of a ball fade. Mm-hmm. You should never see it. That's why I use that as my bar when I teach. You do a ball fade, you get that. Fade. The level of experience that you encounter and you, you receive from a, a ball fade training it's going to take your game from here to there. Quick Absolutely. Time. Quick time. Absolutely. Quick time. All right. Cool. Yeah. Mo, D'Angelo, T. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Yes. Clearly much more to come. Absolutely. All right. Yes, sir. This is deeper than a cut. Deeper than a cut. Deeper. Oh, I thought it was close to play. <laughs> <laughs>